we expect the internet to grow and grow and grow globally. And I think it's in everyone's interest if it's as cost effective and as efficient as possible. Um, I've just come from Strathmore University where they're now doing things like called the Internet of Things, where now it's not just people, but your normal devices in your house, your camera, your TV, your refrigerator, everything will be connected to the Internet. So I think it's in uh, everyone's interests that we make sure that the cost of this and its convenience and the range of services possible. And we're very, very proud that uh, Kenya is going to be the Africa hub uh, for this particular um, benefit. And, but it's better for everyone. Because, you know, the, the cost that we paid or we supported is not too much. But it was important from the beginning. It's not the case of Kenya, but in other countries. We started the project by uh, presenting the project to different countries uh, just to, to show how it can be useful to them. Some countries are interested, so they asked us to come in. Then we started capacity building at these countries where uh, they were ready to, to have uh, the support, the grant for the uh, for the internet exchange points, that it was um, more than this amount. For the regional one, uh, there is a limit between 100 and 300 uh, southern uh, U.S. dollar. But I think the interest and uh, the willingness of the country and uh, to to have or to participate is more important just to to get some. Uh, financial support. Time that you roam in another country um, with your mobile phone. Um, if you go with your Safaricom line here and you, you travel to Uganda, um, you can um, pick up the phone and you can make calls and you can send SMS. Um, and that all works mm -hmm. quite well. Um, you can also um, connect to the internet. You can get your email. Um, but uh, that can be quite slow when you're traveling in, even if you're just in Uganda or Rwanda, that can be very slow and it certainly can be very expensive right now. And um, I'm one of, um, I'm an Airtel customer, but I'm one of their best customers because I travel a lot in the region and I spend a lot of money on data because everywhere I go, I need to be connected straight away. I need to have, um, have my email and get my WhatsApp and everything else and Skype. So as soon as I get off the plane, I have to turn on my data. I'm not, I'm not able to, uh, um, to save my money. And I spend hundreds, hundreds of dollars uh, a month, uh, literally, on the data site, uh, much, much more than I spend on, on voice traffic. And that's all taken up by, by the data roaming. Um, this, uh, this story that, we, you know, that we're announcing today um, started off some, some years ago. And we built the biggest fiber network in Africa, and we tried to um, get an initiative like this going in South Africa. Um, we failed to get any, um, any traction with that. And um, um, round about, I think it was a, about a year and a half ago, the African Union um, wanted to support um, internet exchanges um, that were in Africa. And um, we as Liquid Telecom were also a big supporter of internet exchanges. And um, anyway, so we, we had the idea together with, with Fiona at Tespok um, of... Um, how to create more value. So the internet exchange point here is exchanging people's internet traffic, and that's to say that Kenyan viewers can view Kenyan websites without it going, without their data traffic going out of the country. And um, we wanted to take the, um, the the value of the internet exchange point here uh, to be higher, uh, and that meant that we, um, you know, felt that it was good to establish a GeoX roaming exchange. Now, much as there are many um, internet exchanges all over the world, and I think, how many was it in Africa now? It's 20, 20, 22 now in Africa with the support. Uh, uh, 32. 32. So 32 now in Africa yeah. with the support of, um, of African Union to grow that. Um, we just found that there's only three globally um, of, of these GeoX exchanges. So what that means is that um, when you travel to Uganda, if you turn on your phone and access your mobile data, that then goes um, over the internet. Um, it actually travels, the packets actually travel out through Kenya because it's the subsea cables you know, 
are, are in Mombasa, travels out through Kenya, goes to, to London, and then goes to Amsterdam, where there's a GeoX roaming exchange. And then, uh, um, then it contacts, and, and then it, it goes to Amsterdam, and then Amsterdam, there's a, there's a DNS server there, and that, it says, hi, hi, I'm, uh, your, your packets say, hi, I'm, I belong to Safaricom, I'm a Safaricom subscriber. So the DNS server there says, well, okay, to get back to Safaricom, you've got to go this way. So the packets come back all the way here, back to Kenya, to Mombasa, and then they come to, to, to Nairobi to get to Safaricom. And then, and then you say, well, Safaricom, what website do you want to access? Um, and they look at another DNS server, and, and you say, I want to access um, you know, Google website. So they say, oh, well, that's, that's in America. So you have to go back this way, back to Mombasa, and your packets go to, to Europe and then go to America. So uh, just by you accessing Google, uh, when you're traveling in Uganda with your mobile phone, your packets are literally going to Europe, back to Africa, back to Europe before they can go to America. Um, this makes the cost very high to the mobile operators. Um, it makes the cost, um, or oh, it makes the cost, well, it makes the, the experience of the subscriber very bad. Um, it means that some, some, providers, some providers in Europe are making quite a lot of money. Um, out of it, um, and the African mobile operators are spending quite a lot of money on, on, that, uh, on that service to exchange those packets. Um, by bringing the GeoX exchange here to Kenya, it means that your subscriber in, in Uganda, when, you, when you're traveling in Uganda, it's going to come to Kenya, you'll look up, it'll tell you, yep, Safaricom is right here, it's right next door, and the fiber network will take it straight to Safaricom, and then it'll access to the website, you, you go by the shortest possible route. So by setting up the GRX at the Kenya Internet Exchange Point, we are doing what we have done, but previously for data networks with the mobile networks, because the Kenya Internet Exchange Point, since 2001 when it was established, has been offering a similar service for the packets of uh, the data infrastructure, IP infrastructure. The mobile operators, we are their customers, all of us. We have mobile phones and we are their customers. Now the only thing we are doing is that the, this mobile operator, if they come to the GRX, then we've reduced their cost because the, when the, for the traffic to go to London and to Amsterdam, it goes through pipes. And for them to have your traffic move quickly, they buy certain sizes of pipes from the submarine cables, fiber. So what it does, that cost that they are spending to take your traffic, when Ben is in Uganda taking the traffic to London and Amsterdam, will be reduced, isn't it? Because now they'll not be using that pipe anymore, isn't it? So now they will be coming to Nairobi instead, and they're already in Nairobi, and they're already at the exchange point. They're only going to do a cross-connect from where their gear sits for the voice traffic now onto the GRX. So that reduces for them costs. When that cost goes down, the mobile operators now have a decision to make, which can be one, they will reduce their costs of uh, phone calls and f for roaming. So when you're roaming, you might be just like someone still in Kenya. That is one thing that they can do. Another thing that they can do that I've seen happen with the service providers when we introduce new services at the exchange is they also come up with a different way of pricing, putting their price. So in that same price you're paying, they give you a number of free things. But it is not us who dictate what they can do. Excuse me, 